One Eye to Morocco is actually not really about Morocco, um, although I've been there. I've been to Marrakesh, and uh, I remember all the flavors and sounds and smells of the walled city there. But it actually came from Poland. Um, I was sitting in uh, a cafe in, in Krakow with my friend Tommy, and he was explaining about the amazing um, adventures and exploits, I should say, of Oskar Schindler during the Second World War. And he was at quite a serious point of detail when behind him this uh, very beautiful woman walked along and I followed her with my gaze until she went out the door and then came back to Tommy. I'm sorry, Tommy, what were you saying? He said, ah, Ian, you have one eye to Morocco, which means, I guess, in English, a, a wandering eye. In the full expression in Polish is one eye to Morocco and the other to the Caucasus. And in a literal sense, it's that, you know, you're looking in two different directions at one, at, at one time. More philosophical, more figuratively, um, it would mean something like if you're in school, you're dreaming about um, a afterwards a game of football or something like that, or you're in work and you're dreaming about some sunshine or skiing or whatever you want to do in your spare time. And I thought this is a perfect musical metaphor because, in my case, the Caucasus is deep purple and uh, Morocco is my um, naughty weekend away. This isn't, generally speaking, what I look at. I mean, I think we all have a wandering eye, but my main job is deep purple and I love it. That's my route, that's my family, my musical family, and my direction in life. <clears throat> but. Uh, Every now and again, you, know, you need a break and you need something different. Uh, change is as good as a rest, as they say. And uh, so this is um, that little break. I, I don't feel it very often. Uh, it's not necessary to, uh, um, to feel that very often. Hmm. Um, this record is a collection of songs. I had about 38 uh, in various stages of preparation. I never set out with any idea of uh, getting a message across. Uh, each song has its own um, character, and but they do have a compatibility. Um, I chose the title track as the nucleus of the uh, um, the mood, if you like, and so the, of the 38 songs I had, the ones that were selected were the ones that would uh, fit with this nucleus, uh, musical nucleus. The other thing was I decided it wasn't going to be a rock album per se. I didn't want um, a heavy rhythm section um, with a lot of dramatic performance. Um, I didn't want any guitar solos um, improvised or otherwise. Everything that's on there has been written and um, calculated to make the mood um, continuous and sort of... Uh, there's an intimacy about this that you won't get with a Deep Purple record, which tends to be more in your face. And this is perhaps a little more, or a lot more laid back. Um, I like to think of it as being seductive. Um, so those are the thoughts that I have about it. It's not um, necessarily um, how, I mean, some people just enjoy a record, you know. There's no need to analyze it necessarily. You don't have to analyze every grain of sand on the beach to know that you're walking on a beach. And so um, it, it, this is walking on a beach. Well, I don't want to make a habit of making solo records. It's not, um, it's not my job. Um, it's like a, a break from Deep Purple. It's like a holiday. Um, I write all the time, and when I've accumulated enough material and the time is right, circumstances are right, um, then I'll go into the studio. But I don't want to feel that I or anyone else is under any pressure to do this. And I think if I started uh, making them on a regular basis, um, it would be a little um, uh, disruptive for my passion for Deep Purple. It would take... take it would, I spend too much time on it. When I write songs now, it's just purely for fun. And um, so, yeah, I mean, 10 years is nothing in a lifetime, but it is.
<laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. The difference between um, a solo record like uh, One Night in Morocco or any Deep Purple record is um, like night and day. It's quite simple. When I went into this uh, solo record, I had 38 songs to choose from. And we cut them down and did a selection process, and it was very easy. I rehearsed the band, went in the studio, one, two, three, let's record it. With Deep Purple, there's nothing uh, except the five of us. Mm, there are no songs. There is no plan. There are no titles or lyrics. Um, it's just a, an empty book. We turn up at the studio, put the kettle on, make some tea. How are you doing, mate? Is that dog still alive? How's your football team doing? How's the family? Um, what have you been up to? A little bit of social catching up. And then everyone drifts into the studio and we start working six hours a day and jamming, improvising. And gradually little nuggets, little ideas appear, a, a riff here, a, a rhythm here, a sequence there, a, a pattern, some colour. One little thing might trigger an idea that possibly that could be the basis for a song. And so we make a note of it and come back to it later and try and construct something based around that, that seed, that idea. That's how Purple is always written, um, from improvisation. Um, for the first time I was in the studio, it was um, just jamming. That's how Speaking was written, which is the first song I ever... Um, wrote with um, Deep Purple. And uh, so I remember Roger Glover telling me um, when we joined the band in rehearsals, the band started playing and he thought, I don't know this song, I don't know what, what it is. And he had to think for a few minutes before he realized that it wasn't a song at all. The band was just jamming and that we'd reached a level in our lives where we're working with musicians of such caliber that that's how they work. They have musical conversations with each other and gradually um, the material arrives. That's how Purple works. I, I work differently on the solo stuff, completely differently. You know, I don't know if Purple's ever heard any of my st uh, stuff. Um, maybe it comes up in conversation, but we don't say, oh, love your new album or this, that and the other. I mean, everyone in Purple does work outside of the band. I mean, the moment we finished our tour, the last one, and we'd already played in 48 countries, and there was never even time to breathe before everyone's off doing Steve Morse's on the road with his band, or the Dregs, or Roger's in the studio producing someone, or, or writing someone, or um, uh, Pacey's off always performing with this band, that band, and the other. And I passed Don Airy in Brussels the other day, and he was playing in a jazz club there, so, I mean, it's, uh, our work is collective and individual, and I think it's the fact that these guys are such, um, musicians just play, and so, do they know my stuff? I don't know. <laughs> we don't talk about it very much. We talk more about football. So have things changed? Yes, technically a lot. Um, and also, by that time we'd gone through our formative years. But life changes and circumstance change. You get older, you say things in a different way, your philosophy changes, um, your tolerance levels change, um, your passion hopefully never diminishes, but it's expressed in different ways. When we set off on this journey, there was no map. And so, uh, and there still isn't. We're still going to places where we don't quite know what's around the corner. And so, uh, have things changed? Yeah, a lot. But most of them are technical and things beyond our control. The things that touch us are still the same and the fire that burns is still the same. Uh, the form of expression, still the same voice, still the same, uh, you know, when the influences stop. We haven't absorbed too many influences since 1969. Most of those, not externally anyway, most of them have been internal in terms of musical, i.e. the people you work with, the musicians you work with directly. Um, 
the rest of it is still trying to get out all the things you want to say um, as a human being through the form of music. Um, personally, I have no plans to make another record at the moment, but who knows what's around the corner. Touring, I don't actually have time um, because I'm going back to work now with Deep Purple. Um, so we shall see. If there's a gap, maybe.